Hey everyone, I'm Alex and I'm making a series of videos about software design. I think this is going to be a very important skill in the future because as LLMs get better at writing the actual code, our design skills as software engineers need to improve. As developers, we've been focused on the specifics of typing code for a long time, but as this becomes a solved problem now, uh, our design skills are what is going to be like the big differentiator between unmaintainable and maintainable software. The big thing that I want to start this series of videos with is about an explanation of managing complexity and why this is important. Our biggest struggle and our biggest fight uh, as software engineers is with complexity. Our job is to translate like specifics from the analog world into the digital one and describe them in a limited programming language that has very limited vocabulary and we, knew, we need to do this in the simplest way possible so we can continue to maintain and extend those applications in the future. There is a direct co correlation between higher complexity and the difficulty to understand a project. And you know that if you don't understand something, you can't really work with it. You can't like produce better designs with it. You can't like find good ways to extend it. You, you will not be able to do your, your best work if you can't understand like a piece of software. And there are two types of complexity. The first one is inherent complexity. Like this is the complexity that complexity that comes from the outside world this is like we're working on imagine that you're working on a very complicated um, like stock management applications that is used uh, in a warehouse and there are very detailed processes about how stock is managed through the different warehouses and how like stock is backfilled when when an item is pulled from one warehouse and, and, and runs out of stock for example how this stock is pulled from other warehouses and filled back. We don't really have control over this complexity. This is just how the world works. This is just how this business operates. And in order for, for it to continue working the way that it does, we need to be able to implement the same things inside the code base. Like we, change, we can't change the rules and make them simpler so our applications are simpler. Like the more conditional logic that something has, the more moving bits, the more parts that it has, it becomes uh, more difficult to understand. People often mistake complexity with size and they think that larger code bases are necessarily more complex. Size doesn't like, there is a correlation here, but it's not causation. You can have like big applications that are inherently simple. They just have big operations. They have many of these operations, but if these different operations and tools are not linked together and they don't cause like a cascade of conditional logic that you have to take care of, then this can still be a pretty, pretty simple application to take care of, even, even though it's, it, it, it's a large one. Uh, but you can have like small applications that have very difficult to understand logic. The more difficult it is to translate how logic flows from one state to another, the higher the complexity. The very, and again, very often, we cannot really change these processes. There are situations where we can, and we're going to talk about this in, uh, in, a, in a little bit, but very often we are just presented with a really complex case about how a business or like a company or a project needs to operate, and we need to find a way to implement this in the code base. And this is where we get to the second type of complexity, which is accidental complexity. Now, our control over complexity is mostly limited to how we implement the actual logic inside the applications. Like what are the data structures that we use? What are the algorithms that we use? How do we structure the code base? How do we organize it? How do we make sure that we don't overcomplicate something? This is how we actually implement all this behavior and code. I dare say that for every type of logic, like for every process, for every workflow, like for every logical operation that we need to implement, there is a correct level of engineering complexity that has to be applied to it. Like you've probably heard about over-engineering and under-engineering. Over-engineering is, is when we make something more complex than it should be. Under-engineering is when we make it far too simpler. And there is a good like middle point uh, for like most of the logic that we write and the problem here with programming is uh, This is why I like to say that programming is more art than science because there is no correct formula about How you end up in one place or another. This is about feel. This is about intuition. This is about Understanding of the domain usually like it takes a few years until you kind of start getting this intuitive understanding about how something has to be implemented so it so it can be maintainable what i'm going to try to do today is i'm going to try to give you some examples 
uh, that can short circuit this process so you don't have to like build software for 10 years so you can discover these things on your own because if you implement like certain logic in a more complicated manner than it should be this means that you're making something that's already difficult to understand even more difficult and we, we spoke about this in the beginning the the higher like the harder it is to understand how this works the larger the chance for errors the harder it will be for you to maintain and continue to building on top of this like it's already it's already difficult if we go back to this example about the like the warehouse and the stock management like this is already quite challenging if you add even more like complexity in the code base by for example splitting your application into microservices when you don't need to do this or like adding a bunch of data structures or trying to implement like a complex class hierarchy where, where there's no need for it uh, this is just going to add more and more on top of an already like difficult and complex to understand core like if you make things too simple if you do like if you go into the under engineering side of the spectrum you're not doing yourself a favor again uh, because if you make things too simple, then you are giving yourself far too much flexibility. Like if you have very complex conditional logic, for example, your uh, like gut feeling can be to just implement it with uh, conditional statements, like avoid like polymorphic behavior and, and classes and inheritance and things like that, but just implement it with like a bunch of uh, conditionals and nested conditionals and um, like when you need to add more logic, you're just going to go and add more conditionals to this. But then at some point, this is going to become like your application is not built in a way to like constrain and host the application of the outside world. And you cannot just work with like a core that is a bunch of tangled uh, if else statements. So both sides, of the, both sides of the spectrum are bad. Over engineering makes it difficult to understand under engineering too. But because it's hard to find this middle ground, I always urge people to lean more towards under engineering because you can always make something simpler, more complex, but the other way around is more difficult. So why do we obsess about complexity so, so much? Why is it so important for us to find, like to avoid over and under engineering? Because matching the correct level of engineering complexity for the problem you have to implement is the difference between whether you can maintain this application in the future or you cannot. The thing that I want to emphasize here is that complexity matter matters in the long term. Like if you have to write a one-off script, if you have to write like a proof of concept for your startup or like just some a prototype that you have to demo to someone once, complexity doesn't matter then because you will not feel the impact of this complexity like you're just going to write this application once and throw it away complexity doesn't matter then complexity is important in the long term when you have to continue going back to this application when you have to add new logic to it when you have to change like the existing behaviors this is when complexity can really trip you up this takes us back to the idea that there's no formula again because very often we start working on like a proof of concept and we just put something together we just make it like put a prototype quick and dirty uh, and then like our team says okay we actually need to ship this but then like the core that you have prepared and the application in this state it's not built to, it's not it wasn't built to be maintainable it was built for a prototype but people don't understand this because they only see like the the the, the final result okay now uh with all that theory aside let's go into some strategies about managing complexity inside your application the first one that i think is actually most important is to collocate related logic like one of the things that makes understanding functionality most difficult is having to jump from function to function or from class to another class from one module to another module and go like between five or six different functions that are put in different places in the application to understand one single operation like not having the related pieces living together can easily make you lose track of context and then if you have to like remember the context from the first function, but then jump between two or three files in a different place of the application to find out how exactly this is used. This puts a lot of mental strain on you. And then again, increases the chance of you making an error. So the rule that I follow here is that if certain logic changes together, then it has to live together. A good example for this is React components and custom hooks. I don't like put my components and hooks into separate files. If, a com if one component uses a particular hook, then I will put this hook together with it in the same folder. 
this makes it obvious that this hook only only relates to this component and when you see it in like the folder tree on the side of your id then you can immediately understand that okay in order for this like file to be placed next to the component it obviously relates to this file and this is like co-location is a communication mechanism if you have functions that are used together don't put one on the bottom of the file and if you have functions that are used together don't put one on the bottom of the file and then the other in the top of the file keep them closer together so when a person opens their their screen they can see the two functions at the same time when you're working with a variable like don't define it at the top of the function define it close to where you you're using it like like there um memory optimization benefits to this but we're not even talking about this we're only talking about software design like short-lived variables define it use it and then you don't have to think about it because if you see a variable that's the final line one and you're using it on, on line 20 these are 20 lines where you have to remember what this what this variable does and in a smaller scope in the scope of one function this doesn't matter that much someone will remember it but in the scope of an entire application if you have to do this multiple times a day then this becomes a problem uh, the second principle i follow is to hide complexity like everybody's been there when when you're a kid you probably had that messy drawer that you put all your textbooks and notepads and, and pencils into and it, it had no order to it but then you could close it and you could tell your parents that you cleaned your room this is a messy solution but it does work sometimes you just have complex logic that you need to implement you know and there's not much that you can do about it i had this case where i was implementing a statistical operation one time and it was just messy but by wrapping all this logic in a function and by giving this function a descriptive name and like a simple api that only takes like a two or three parameters for people to work with then you've essentially dealt with this complexity because if you leave it like if you leave if you leave this messy logic in the middle of another function then this adds mental strength to the person who has to understand it but if you leave only a function call that says calculate this then they don't have to be bothered with like the core uh, of the actual function the third principle is to spread logic around like the the previous thing we talked about is about combining and wrapping logic there's the alternative idea that when you have like a very long operation keeping track of everything that's happening can too be difficult if you have like logic that takes 10 steps for example on step seven you're going to be wondering what step three was it's, it's best to split it out into multiple smaller functions like just spread it out again follow the principle of co-location have these functions live in the same file or have them live in the same folder so it's easy to understand that they're related but spread them out into smaller logical operations and then when you call these functions you're only going to see like okay step one step two step three the next principle that we have is to avoid hypotheticals like the words what if we need to are the bane of my existence as a software engineer like very often especially in a corporate environment when you go about talking uh, when, when you're discussing different solutions to problems someone is going to say the words well what if we need to change the database what if we need to change this vendor what if we need to change this provider and then you go about adding complexity and adding abstractions in places where you will probably never need them like i have seen only one database change and database migration in my entire uh, career that spans more than a decade now and the api of the objects in the code base was the least of my worries like the more difficult the most difficult part about the database migration is going to be how you move data from one uh, like storage model to another your apis in the code base will not be a problem i guarantee you so avoid hypotheticals like if you have a real case where you're expecting to change a vendor in the near future then yeah like accommodate this in the logic like create an abstraction over this uh, but if you're not really expecting this then th just don't do it this is a necessary complexity like you working with the database is already difficult enough don't add extra layers and add more complexity on top of that the next principle is that simple and easy are often different things there's this amazing talk uh, that i'm going to link in the description below uh, that you can go and watch and, and i recommend it uh, that this will describe this better than i better than i do but um, people often use the word simple and easy synonymously but they're actually two different things when you're writing logic it's easy to implement everything at one function but this doesn't make it simple 
if we go back to the principles that we discussed like earlier, uh, it's gonna this logic is gonna be simpler if you split it in like two or three smaller functions that you can then like orchestrate and pass the data from one to the other. It's easy to write it in the same place, but again, this doesn't make it simple. The next principle is to actually spend time on design. Uh, like when you're writing a blog post, for example, or an article or a paper, you you usually like create a draft, you write a draft, and then you go over this draft two or three times to edit it, to clear the typos, to improve the design, uh, uh, like the phrasing. But somehow many engineers believe that the code that they write is great from the first try. So they just write something, they get it to work, and then they ship it. Like if you have, want to have like a long lived application that people can work on and that people can extend and modify, it's worth to spend some time on designing this. Your first solution will most probably not be the ideal one. It can be, it can be, it absolutely can, but there will most probably be things that you can edit and improve. So the way that I go about this is I write the logic, I get it to work, and then I go to it, I look at it, and I ask myself, okay, if I'm not familiar with this, where, which are the places that can trip me up? If I don't have the context that I have right now in my head, how can I improve this code to make it simpler for people to work with? And this doesn't just go about people. You know, it's, it's proven that the rules that we use uh, to make uh, code understandable by humans makes it more understandable by LLMs as well. Short-lived functions, smaller functions, uh, shorter context, this will make your work with like uh, work with cursor easier in the future as well. The next principle is to stay close to the domain language of the business. Let's go back to the like to the to the warehouse. Uh, let's go back to the warehouse problem. Uh, like there's probably some business specific lingo about how stock is managed in a warehouse. Like I don't know what it is, but there are probably like certain terms or vocabulary that people use. And if you can use this same vocabulary in your code, this is going to make like understanding what this does a lot easier. Uh, because if you can reason about your implementation like you would reason about like regular day operations in a warehouse, you can understand it as a person. But if your application is filled with like generic technical programming terms like formatter, parser, uh, manager, data and, and things like that, then you're going to have to constantly map what this thing in the code base maps in the real world. Like if you have to book an appointment for a doctor, like avoid the urge to create a scheduler class with like a whole different behaviors when all you need is like a book an appointment function. And the final principle, I'm not sure if this even qualifies as a principle, is when you catch yourself actually writing complex code, ask yourself, Am I doing this just to prove that I'm smart or this actually has to be this way? Chances are that two, two out of three times you can find a simpler way to implement this logic. If you're in the programming field, you're probably excited by puzzles. You're excited by like you're a creative person. You want to create interesting designs. You too are probably prone to create uh, like implementations that are more complex than they should be. Like if the domain and if the complexity of the real world problem is not asking for this, then it's best to avoid it. And I know that this is hard because you want to work on challenging and exciting things. But if the company that you're working for requires like simple CRUD based software with only a couple of complexity hotbeds, then you don't have to create something more complex than it should be. If you want to write more complex software, go work in a more complex domain. Go like work on pacemakers, go work on rockets, go work on something that can soak this complexity and something that actually needs this behavior underneath. So yeah, I hope you like this. Let, let, let me know if this is useful. This is video one. I don't really have a schedule about how I want to make these. So I'll just see how people react to this one and then like see where I can see, see where I can take it from there. I can, I can talk a lot about these things because like I've learned a lot about these things from trial and error and I'd be happy to share it with people. Um, so yeah. So yeah, let me know if this was useful and I'll see you in the next one.